I'm Liz from 1700 and we're very excited today to be joined by Martin Atkins at the Fates Music Conference. So in 07 you released Tour Smart and what's the number one mistake you see in bands that they're doing wrong when they're touring? Like what's something you see over and over? They choose the venue that's too big. Yeah. So they've got 100 fans and they play the 300 capacity venue and it's a great way to lose your 100 fans because now they're like cold in this venue instead of being hot and sweaty in an 80 capacity venue. Yeah. Um, the bands have made that mistake from all time. Uh, and I just, I keep hammering, the worst thing that can happen if you choose a venue that's too small, you sell out. Yeah. And you put that on your website, sold out, we sold out. Yeah. Uh, and that's a press release, oh my god, we sold out. And now agents and managers are like, what? And it's they just will, better having that more intimate kind of setting than... Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Keep... well, it's better to have as many people as you can, yeah. but you have to fuel the, the, the vibe. Yeah. Um, bands don't have a range of t-shirts. They'll have one shirt, which is left over from two tours ago that nobody wanted a year ago and they don't want yeah. now, and your cat pissed on the shirts and... The, you know, they drop them in a puddle, and now they're bands do that all the time. You need at least two shirts in a range of sizes. Uh, you need to learn to screen print so you can make the stuff yourself. Um, bands don't play the hits; they play the same songs over and over again. Um, they play the new songs instead of the good songs. Um, people need to hear the good songs. There's so many mistakes, and they arbitrarily book a tour of America. And if they looked at their data, if they looked at their back-end Google Analytics on YouTube or Bandcamp or anywhere, Reverb Nation, you, maybe all their fans are in Belgium. Mm. So what advice would you give to musicians that are wanting to get their music out there or, you know, start their own labels? Friends don't let friends start labels. Yeah. That's the rule. <laughs> um, it's, it's a nightmare. You start off loving music mm. and you end up hating it. Um, it's really, really tough, and if you get into the music business because you have an open heart and you love stuff, and you want to help people, you can get so punched in the nuts, you know, uh, you, you might never recover from it. It's tough. Um, for a band, stop trying to get this deal and do this deal. Stop trying to sell 500 albums to a distribution company and sell one album to a person at your show yeah. or give some stuff away because okay. if your music is good you don't lose when you give stuff you win because someone's listening to it and now you have a fan and I'd rather have a fan than an album you know so uh, give your music away make EPs and singles instead of albums yeah. and just keep stuff coming work really hard because you need uh, you know Taylor Swift yeah. just released an album in the States the version that you get from Target, the supermarket, I don't know if they have that over here, has six extra tracks on it. Six. Like, and the, you know, there's another version for somebody else. So it's like she has to write two albums to release one. You just have, to, it's so much work. Yeah, you're just um, going to keep putting stuff out there. Do you think yeah. online is also a good medium? Band should definitely use that. Online's great. Give stuff yeah. away online because it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. But then you need to do a weird wooden box filled with ball bearings that smells amazing and has your album in it. And so people go, ooh, and then you click for the download and some lunatic will buy the box for $500. And as a band, you can think, when we put the music in a physical object, what will it be? Who are we? Which is an interesting exercise for a band. Maybe it's sharp and rusty, and when you pick it up, it cuts you. Maybe it smells bad. Maybe it's shiny and makes you want to take your clothes off. You know, who not, right? Do you think about it, and it redefines who you are. It defines your brand. Yeah. And then that can become this physical reference point for who you are musically. You know, so. Uh, just a physical album, a jewel case wrapped in plastic, that's done, that's over. Yeah. A homemade album, hand screened by the artist, embroidered, uh, scratch and sniff ink, I do that. Well, so your new book, Band Smart, is coming out next year. Can you tell us Maybe about later this year. Later this year, maybe? It's the prequel to Tour Smart. It's everything from deciding to start a band, how many people are going to be in it, why do bands break up, etc. <laughs> studio stuff all the way up to national and international touring which is covered in Tosmo so it's kind of the prequel to Tosmo yeah.
It went up to 950 pages. I'm trying to edit it down to 650. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Long process. <laughs> so what else is going to be coming up for you? Is it mainly the book installed and giving speeches? Audio books, yeah. which I'll give away. Um, and then involving students in everything that I'm doing. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I'm so busy. My studio's been empty for two years. It's crazy. Mm. It's criminal. So I'm just going to let students... I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> This is Martin Atkins from Public Image Limited, Kill and Jump, Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, Pig Face, The Damage Manual, Invisible Records, Tour Smart, Band Smart, and welcome to Music Business, you're f***ed, and you're listening and watching to 1700.